everybody. I rose today to give honor to God, my pastor and first lady. Hallelujah. And my church family, I owe you an apology. I had mentioned to my pastor seven months, several months ago about vaping. I knew there was something unreal about that, the way all that smoke would come out. I don't take that much air in. I just knew it was something. Mm. Now, I testified earlier about me smoking marijuana since I was 13 years yes. old. Yes. And I gave it up. Hallelujah. Being obedient to the Spirit, I walked away from it. All this vaping and marijuana ties in together. Oh, yes. Come on now. People are falling dead because Show of them. this vaping. Want to vape marijuana? Mm. THC. But what you don't understand is the chemical process that's going on inside the lungs. That when something is heated up, it becomes a gas. When it cools off, it becomes a solid. This is what's killing you inside the lungs. It's gelling inside the lungs. Now, the reason I didn't speak on it was because I, I, felt, I didn't feel confident in what I was saying because I wasn't educated enough to know what I was talking about, to present it to you. See, there's always a warning before destruction. Yeah. God had told me to give up that marijuana, then they changed the law. Say, no, you can smoke marijuana. It's all right. But God said, no. That's God right. was I love that marijuana. I'm serious. I love that marijuana. And I believe right now, I'd be dead. Because the law said you can smoke it. And here's a better way to smoke it. We're going to put it in a pipe and let you vape it. Mm. And I'm telling you that if you are secretly vaping, Ooh. you're going to leave that stuff alone. Because God got a way of revealing it. Revealing it. You might not know what's going on, but Whoa. we don't know. Come on now. We don't know. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Give me God all the honor, praise and glory. Yes. The first lady and everybody in respectful places. Jesus. Um, I got up to talk about um, a testimony from a few months ago. Um, I want to thank God for being patient, very patient. And there was a situation on my job. I was very irritated about it. And it was kind of frustrating, but I had prayed to the Lord about it. And I had prayed, I had just been praying, praying, praying. And you know we're supposed to wait on the Lord. You know, we don't know what's best to do something he does. So this particular time, I got my flesh rose up at work and I got really frustrated and irritated. And I went to my boss and said I needed to speak to her about something because I was going to try to handle it myself. And Lord, this lady came in there. It was me and another co-worker was standing up there talking. And she came in speaking to us. And some kind of way we got on the subject of, um, you know, not supposed to open your mouth about everything. And she said I look familiar, but I didn't really know I have seen her. And she just went to talking and she was saying about some situations that she had to shut her mouth about. And she looked at me and she said, I don't know why. I'm telling you this. You know, and I'm like, I'm looking at her, and it was just the way she was looking at me. I don't know about nobody but God. He would tell me to hush my mouth and let him handle it. So what I did when my boss came back to me later on and said, um, what did you need to talk to me about? I told her, that's all right. But Lord knows, you supposed to acknowledge him in all your ways. I didn't pray about it before I said I needed to speak to her. And my pastor has said, you know, sometimes we can we can shut down, you know, the Holy Ghost. And that's what I did. My flesh, that my flesh took over. How about he took care of that situation? I didn't have to say nothing. I believe if I had said something, it would have been an ugly situation. I really do between some of the you know, me and some of the co-workers. But I just thank God for his patience. I really do. to First Lady, everybody in their place. I thank God for rebuke. 
Oh, yes. I really thank God for rebuke because oh, yes. if you have a child, you see that child going wrong, doing wrong, Come on, you're mother. going to correct that What's child. Right, mother? And if God loves us, he's going to correct us. There was a time when I got rebuked so hard, my former pastor, his favorite scripture was, open rebuke is better than secret love. I got rebuked in the church so hard because I got up. I got my pocketbook, put it on my oh, show. You talking to somebody? I grabbed my two kids and my little holy Bible, and I walk out the door. Oh, you talking to somebody? Yeah. Pastor Kathy Peterson, she rebuked me so hard. Mm. I got upset and I left. Three days later, mm. I couldn't stand it no more. The Holy Ghost was working mm. on me. Yeah. I called my pastor crying. I said, I'm sorry. Yes. Forgive me. I went back to Pastor Peterson. I asked her for forgiveness. When rebuke come, it's not that we, it's to correct us. It's to help us. It don't feel good to our flesh when we get no women. Amen. But when we take it, if we take that correction, it's going to help us. Amen. You heard testimony out you know about what how different ones you know came through and if they had to stop what they were doing Amen. there was destruction waiting on them Amen. so I just thank God for rebuke giving on to God who's the head of my life pastor and first lady I just want to get up and tell God thank you yes. because there's no thing in my life that God didn't intervene and step in and help me all the time. Yes. Y'all, I was, I was facing a 30 years sentence. God only gave me two years of probation. The doctor told me within one year, and that's been 10 years ago, that I would be dead because of the health in my body. And then one day when it was, when it was right, I went over check my blood pressure. And the people in right there told me, you better go to the doctor immediately. You better not go over there to that church. But I got my cousin to leave me over here, y'all, because I was so, well, I could even walk straight. Oh, and they took me back there and they prayed the prayer of faith over me. And I got on my knees right there. The first lady came and started praying over me. But when I left church and I went back over there to that prayer lady, my blood pressure was down.
Um, ever since my brother passed, the devil been fighting me. The easiest thing to do is to go back. Yeah. And I know from past experience, when I did go back, Come on it now. was the worst mistake of my life. Come on. Speaking of rebuke, mother, Pastor Kyle, and he told me, while I was in the middle of my mess, that if I didn't turn around and come back to God, not only was I going to be a lesbian, but I was going to be a pothead. I had made it to being a lesbian yet, praise God. But I was definitely a pothead. I smoked from the time I got up to the time I went to bed. It started out with, I just want to smoke just to go to sleep. It started out with, I just want to smoke before I eat. And then it went to, I got to smoke in the morning. I got to smoke before I got to go to work. I got to smoke on my lunch break. I'm smoking when I get off work. I'm smoking in between then. And I'm smoking before I go to sleep. And then I'm going to do it again the next day. And this is every day. Not a day was different. It, it was every single day. And I was at my worst. I couldn't do nothing without smoking. I, I didn't even want to eat if I couldn't smoke. Oh, you're talking to somebody.
everybody in their respective places. I just thank God for delivering me. I thank him for changing me. I thank him for delivering me from smoking marijuana weed and for delivering me from yeah. drinking. It's been almost a year. Uh, October 27th will be a year. October 27th. I thank him in advance. I know that I'm about to do it, but Jesus, what do you me to do it? We're going to get done. It couldn't have got done. So I thank God. Thank you. 